January, BBC Studios announced the shutdown of BBC Entertainment, to no surprise, because only 12 viewers remained faithful to it. So it's time to make a quick retrospective. BBC Entertainment's ancestor is BBC Prime, but it was actually two generations ahead, or behind, or I don't even know. Two generations earlier, there was this mysterious BBC TV Europe, of which little or no footage of it survives. Which is a shame, really, would have been interesting to see how its graphics were. Until 1991. That's when BBC World Service Television launched. The channel was available to Europe and Asia. The latter had a separate feed without the entertainment output, because if you were paying attention in Fallen Star, the entertainment programming went out on Star Plus. Also, it was on Star's satellite service, and it had the entire Time Watch scandal in 1994. With that Mao Zedong documentary, and that was neither here nor there. The format of the channel was mostly driven on news as time dragged on, yet the European feed also had some entertainment content that the BBC had cleared out for international broadcast. ITV had done it before in 1987, it was Super Channel, but that didn't last long, it was neither here nor there. Thanks, Equity. Super Channel continued, but they changed the schedule. Up until 1994, the islands featured the cow's retirement years abroad, like your grandfather who lives under pension funds in the Algarve. When in 1994 they decided to rebrand the channel, something more grandiose was on the horizon, as the new look for BBC World Service Television was more ready for a news intensive service, and the islands only said BBC which is exactly what the BBC wanted to make, although strictly limited for Europe for the time being. BBC Prime. Television worth watching. In late January of 1995, the old European World Service Television was replaced by BBC Prime, which was encrypted. Whereas BBC World was entirely free to air because it's cheaper to deliver news and entertainment by satellite. This was part of a two channel strategy between BBC Worldwide and Pearson. BBC World was to be seen as a British counterweight to CNN, especially with the BBC's truly international reach as a news organisation. Also, they were technologically superior. BBC Prime was a whole other story. This was the launch item for BBC Prime, running on the theme of diamonds, because diamonds are prime materials, yeah? The possible metaphor will be in the programming. And you'll find more metaphors like this as the video progresses, because he wants to eschew the idea that they had the best British TV catalogue of all time. No, ATV, you're not even here. For one, the BBC was associated with quality shows, and drivel, and Pearson through the Thames catalogue, which by then was already a mere production company, was historically associated with quality shows and limited drivel. Yes, there was always drivel like Never the Twain, but let's move on. The channel consisted largely of old BBC content and some new ones. 75% was drawn from its catalogue, with the remaining 25% coming from Thames. The genesis of the programming consists of mostly non-wildlife documentaries, lifestyle shows, TV series, soaps, drama, and they even had a CBBC block which they inherited from World Service Television and used the studios for pre-recorded announcements. The channel was primarily aimed at expats though, however it was later revealed that the channel would still have a majority of viewers who are actually nationals of the country that pick, that pick the service. For Christmas, they even recycled a 1990 look. Only for the trailer package, as long as evidence of BBC One was hidden. Also, the ident was the same year round. They never had a Christmas ident, so... Yeah. They even had simulcasts of BBC World at least once a day, and some European reports read by some guy from the BBC where the graphics machine 3000. And that's how the channel looked until the big rebrand of October 1997. Martin Laminen was at the helm again, this time with a couple of marbles reflecting each other. I don't know exactly what was the rationale behind the marbles, but I do know it was a bloody good ident. 
Around this time, the Pearson joint venture European Channel Management started to disband, and in 1998, at the expense of launching the BBC World Channel in the Americas, all the Thames programmes had disappeared, which explains why BBC Prime lost Count Docula and the Bill. That and the news. With BBC World practically everywhere now, you'd think this would be redundant to have news on what is strictly an entertainment channel. Another event that oversaw this look was the arrival to Africa on the DSTV platform in 1999, which wasn't even alone. In fact, Carlton Select's African feed was there from the very beginning in 1995. Now this is the look I remember from my childhood the most. Titled Festival, it was the first look to contain strictly a set of items, rather than just one item or one item of slight variations in music and call it a day. The package featured a bunch of caricature depictions of British landmarks drawn in fireworky fashion, if that's even a word I invented, which was also the work of Lambie Nairn's company if I'm not mistaken, just like every other BBC brand at the time. Truly, this was the prime of the channel's life, pun unintended, and even CBBC's rebrands continued on BBC Prime. They still did those pre-recorded links until at least 2006. The one thing I don't remember from my childhood was BBC Learning, which I only had learned in passing of its existence, because of it when I was asleep. BBC Learning was like the BBC Learning Zone, but taken to another level. For a start, it didn't have that increasingly outdated acorn, which actually lasted for 18 years, and had a much more dynamic identity, if not it went too far on that metric. And like the Learning Zone's acorn, it had only one ident, which had this blocky man as its visual mascot. In 2006, BBC Prime rebranded in order to pander to wider audiences, not the lowest common denominator. This led to a couple of changes to minor sets of its programming. CBBC was replaced by CBBS because they had found out that the amount of content produced for CBBS outnumbered the amount of content produced for CBBC. This would lead to the creation of foreign feeds starting that year, and now I understand why CBBS practically stopped making puppet shows. Oh, story makers, how I miss you. Maybe it's just my nostalgia factor. I think shows like those weren't even made for mass export worldwide. At the same time as those decisions were taken, BBC Learning was removed, and BBC Prime rebranded in the middle of the summer. <laughs> Created by Simon Crabtree, who created the rebrand from UKG2 to Dave, the new items were minimalistic, but creative. Oh, come on, you thought you were insulting the 1996 Carlton package simply because of the same rationale. In fact, sadly, minimalistic looks like these are subject to constant imitation by kids on YouTube who want to make their own awful recreations, but I digress. This package consisted of staggering 14, 14 idents, which, if you get the pitch right, were relatively easy to make. The channel's sonic identity was limited to an ambient noise, which was only heard at the beginning of some of the idents. The rest was just either silence or whatever noises there were. The idents were a combination of the mundane, the bizarre, and like I said, the minimalistic, because you don't need to be so complex to tell such a story in idents. Says the one who doesn't want to talk much about idents because uh, they make me feel like a loner nowadays. These were presented in a heavily geometric image, only this look was able to convey. Well, Carlton in 1996. But that's another story. These items usually had a lack of sound, especially in the last 20 or so seconds of the ident, 
because this was for the announcers to show their pre-recorded links. But one thing I do remember is that these items would, would run for at least 10 to 15 out of the 25-ish seconds because they no longer had the announcers to do the pre-recorded links, a product of the massive shift at BBC Worldwide. And if there's some correlation between the two, then it's because in 2006, shortly after Europe got this rebrand, BBC Worldwide started its master plan to relaunch its international TV offer, beginning with the end of BBC Prime in Asia, which only started in 2006. It was the first region to be replaced by a new service called BBC Entertainment, which in practice narrowed down further to that just pure entertainment. The same rationale also led to the spin-off of the CBeebies content to its own channel. In fact, CBeebies continued on the pan feed of BBC Entertainment until the mid-2010s, when it jacked off for good, and all of that lifestyle content would move over to BBC Lifestyle. This last service replaced the channel that was advertised on BBC Prime when I was a child, BBC Food, which was only available in Africa and Scandinavia. And I was puzzled as how BBC Worldwide carried the commercial in the pan feed for the service, which if you recall had the idents from UK food, now I think it's good food, or I think it shut down, or you know what. And it was only available in certain regions, but we were excluded. And Scandinavia would later become one of its priority markets, kind of like how BBC TV Europe started. Gradually, the new service was rolled out across Europe, and us Portuguese were the poor plebs who didn't want to have the upgrade package. What they wanted in Scandinavia and Poland was to pander less to expats and more to locals. I mean, they stopped broadcasting Eurovision, the semi finals, I don't think they even aired, but the finals did simply because of this massive shift. And in Poland, they resented in 2009 having a cursed deal with NBC Universal because I recall reading that the Polish subfeed, or Polish feed to be more accurate, aired House MD, which is so cursed. I think it's more about, I think it's more of a question of, say, such an agreement and I don't think they even have Universal TV. Uh, I think they have a... Uh, am I having a Mandela effect? So in 2009, on the 11th of November, BBC Prime was assassinated for good. The rebrand wasn't even new. It was already seen elsewhere since at least 2008, which means that the BBC Prime look used between 2006 and 2008 is actually lost media. Created by Dunning Ellie Jones, the new look was centred on fountains, which made you think that BBC Entertainment was made to be a luxury channel available in such extravagant locations. Las Vegas, the UAE, Singapore and the rest. Why the fountains? Because the metaphor was to bring great entertainment to the viewer. Although these items were designed for widescreen, most of the feeds were still stuck in 4x3. And these were to last until the 2011 to 2012 period. What, what turned out to be the last rebrand for the channel came to be. designed by Heavenly and was a package of five items centered on themes, much like the previous package did in some way. For this one they didn't want to break the stigma that the BBC was just news like what many other people thought that the BBC was outside of the UK. In fact, it was actually phased, like I said. By 2012 it was already used in every feed. And this oversaw massive changes to BBC worldwide, which is now BBC Studios. 
for one, in the middle of the 2010s, they decided to split, and the areas that had their own feeds into two new services. BBC Studios' scripted content will be carried on a new service called BBC First, which we are poor and we don't even have the budget for a localized channel. And BBC Brit was all about uh, Top Gear, Flop Gear, you know what I mean. And even those two channels are just pandering towards locals and not expats, like what used to be in the past. In fact, expats should likely move to IPTV services. Who knows, I don't even think it's legal. In fact, the last big thing BBC Entertainment did was relocating its license to the Netherlands as a consequence of Brexit. I haven't watched BBC Entertainment in, well, literally ages. Same for my mom, who used to watch the British version of Weakest Link for on that channel in the early 2010s. Looking back at the channel's development since then, maybe made me believe that there's an ungodly amount of cursed agreements with Channel 4, provided that outside of the United Kingdom, it's under the BBC Studios catalogue. Now, using these items for a record-breaking 12 years is comparable to, say, BBC Two's package from the 90s, or the even longer Learning Zone. It's just a sign that the channel doesn't know how to adapt to a new phase. We're now in the chameleon age of the BBC, and they haven't even chameleonized themselves. In fact, rebranding to the chameleon identity is only possible in the minds of mockers who, especially the ones nowadays, they're just, I don't think that, I think they're as immature as the ones that existed back in the APFS era. Another sign of the downfall was when my provider refused to renegotiate with BBC Studios in 2022, so it and BBC World News were dropped in June. When Operation London Bridge fell in September, I was deprived of the BBC's view of events. But then again, they didn't want to pay attention to the expat audience anymore. I mean, even ITV fell prey to that. The competing ITV choice shut down to Noahville in 2020, when the last remaining feed went off here in Africa. Part of me thinks that both BBC Studios and ITV Studios have become more competitive among the production companies of the Anglophone world, and think that the only way to recapture the finances is by content sales like what it used to be in fast channels. Who knows if soon we'll think all of this is a mistake and we'll return to pan-continental satellite channels. At least that united viewers. Channels nowadays are meant to divide, especially with countries becoming protective of buying foreign content due to costly affairs. Or so I think. I mean, even Terminator taught us that in case of a technological advancement that went haywire, we all go back to walkie-talkies. I mean, if the internet is taking us haywire, does this mean we're going back to linear TV and satellite? I don't know. I think I'm exaggerating over that. But who knows?